Hi, my name is Stephen Simon and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about five fundamental and very important steps every machine learning project involves, which may be a project that you are making for your college or you are making for a client. And these steps are also very important from interview perspective. So let's get into video. All right, let's get into the video. So the first step and very, very important steps among all five is the data collection. So when I say data collection, it actually means accessing your data. And if you're working on a machine learning project, data is the fundamental part of any machine learning project. Almost entire thing involves around data. And this data can come from various resources. For example, it may be a CSV file that you're working, it may be a PDF file, it may be an image, it may come from an IoT device, it may even come from a smartphone, the data may be coming from a web API or it may be coming from a server. You must know on how to import the data in your machine learning project. Now since data is very very important, it can influence your entire machine learning model that you're going to train. I've made a video that explains the difference between batch machine learning model and online machine learning. There are two different ways on how you import data in your machine learning project. And depending upon that, your entire ecosystem of a machine learning will change, project will change on how you import the data. One of the very common library if you're working on Python and you're moving into machine learning, Pandas is a very common library that everyone uses to import the data. With Pandas, you can import uh, CSV files, PDF files, and a lot more. But you should be also be able to get the data that is coming on a regular interval. That is the data that is coming on a continuous flow. In most of the cases, such type of data come from an IoT device or from a smartphone. Just imagine if your task is to get the data from an Arduino, which is connected to a temperature sensor and it is sending you data every single second. You should be able to collect that data and store it and then process it. The processing is the second part. So the very first step that any machine learning project involves is to import the data in your machine learning project and how you do it that is very very important either you're going to upload the data in your project once at all go or you're going to take batches for it right so importing the data is one of the very important steps involved in machine learning project and that was the step number one now let's move to the step number two and step number two is data pre-processing this process is also called feature engineering if you're a data scientist 80% of your time you're going to spend on this process. Why so? Because once you have collected the data from this step number one, now is the task you start filtering your data. For example, once you have got the data, there are possibilities that there might be some missing values. Now you don't want missing values to go in your machine learning model. So you're going to remove it. There's some possibilities that there are multiple values for the same record. You would also like to remove that. And there are also possibilities that you have if you have 10 columns in your Excel sheet and if you want to train using that data, your machine learning model, you don't need those 10 columns. You might need only four or five columns. How are you going to decide it? Entire thing will be done in your data pre-processing stage, which I said is also called feature learning. And as I said earlier, once again, if you're a data scientist, 80% of your time, you're going to spend on this data pre-processing because say suppose if you have taken six columns to train your machine learning data out of 10 and you realize after training that it is not giving you a good uh, accuracy you might want to change those six columns and how you're going to do it frankly speaking if you'll ask to any data scientist the best way to find out which attributes work for machine learning model it's all hit and trial you need to go and actually uh, do the all hit and trial method on which works the best so after data collection once you have the data the second step was data pre-processing step number three now here where the maths gets involved this step is called descriptive statistics this is where you actually figure out on what algorithm you are going to apply in your machine learning model now there are n number of machine learning models right even if i talk about just machine um, linear regression they're just one simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, polynomial linear regression, and many more. So you are going to decide then upon all those machine learning models that you have, what are you going to apply on your data set? 
which will actually come out to be a machine learning model. Also, one of the most easiest step to do is to take your data and start plotting it in your Excel file. Either you can do it with pen and paper. Of course, that's not going to happen. But you're going to use a uh, visualizing tool. It may be a Power BI or it may be Panda. Uh, you can use Matplot if you're going for Python. But to get started, you can just use Excel to actually visualize your data. And then you can actually find out a pattern and then start deciding which algorithm to work on. So first step was collection of data. Second step was data pre-processing, which is also called feature engineering. And third step was descriptive statistics, which does involve good amount of calculations and maths. Step number four, this is where actually magic happens. This is the time you train your machine learning model. A training machine learning model, it might look easy if you're just using TensorFlow or scikit-learn, but it does involve very, very critical steps as if what about the data that you have given and what is the ratio that you have divided of training data set and the test data set? What are the degrees that you are going to train your data? Everything is involved in this training of machine learning model step. In most of the cases, if I talk about uh, polynomial regression, even changing a single degree can change the accuracy of an entire machine learning model. So this model, this step, which actually looks very easy if you're just using TensorFlow or scikit-learn is a very crucial step after collection of the data. Moving on to step number five and probably the last step that is visualization. Now why it is important? You now see you have taken the data, you have done pre-processing it, right? You have applied the algorithm and you have trained your machine learning model. So once you have trained your machine learning model and you have given the test data, that test data would give you some new output. And once you have that new output, you would like to visualize it. Visualizing the data will give you an idea on how accurate your existing data and your new outcomes are. In that way, you will be able to get a good accuracy whether the machine learning model is been trained definitely or not. But think doesn't end here. After visualization, there's one more step. Because it doesn't end here, it is a loop. The control goes back again to the data collection. Why so? Because if you would look, take an example of a reinforcement learning, the output of a data, the output of a, your machine learning model becomes the input or the feedback of the machine learning model itself. So the new values that you have calculated may be used as the input values for the next machine learning model or maybe for any other devices or for any other project. So after the visualization, the uh, output may go to the data collection or may go to the any of the uh, end services that might utilize it. Those are the five important steps that you should be knowing if you are a data scientist or if you're a data scientist aspirant. Also, I have made a bunch of videos about machine learning. You can check the link in the description and I am sure those are going to help you out. That's all from my side in this video. Thank you so much for watching till here. My name is Steven Simon. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. See you in the next video.